Oh boy. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode. You of cut me off, off, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Man, We're, all still plug, work. Plug the lead. We're all a family. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> Episode uh, 48. You son of a bitch. Oh, dude. You know? <laughs> I hope all, 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 all of you are doing well. Sammy, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I started playing Nobody Wants to Die. I'm like about oh, 12 yeah. in. It's Bro. really good. Uh, what else have I done? Oh, yeah. I got a tattoo. I got a little uh, oh. LG oh. symbol. The band aid's coming nice. off. Don't mind that. But... Hold on, man. Do it again. Wait, say that again. Hold on. L- LGs? Like the... I think nice. that's like how you company? pronounce it. No, so it's oh, like yeah. a it's like, like a I remix. Like, I was like, yeah. oh, you really like that TV, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you meant like like yeah. 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 it's it's literally it's like the Nordic symbol for protection uh, for the Valkyries. Oh, more cool. oh cool but then it's also you know there's like some sub stories and like it's like the road to Valheim and stuff like that and yeah that's really cool. Definitely. Is it for like any particular reason, or just you just like that? You know the symbology of it. It has some layers, and like it's kind of cool that it's in Hellblade too as well. Um, and then me and my mm. best friend, we never managed to live in the same city at the same time. Like she'll be in Vancouver, and then like when she's finally back, I'll be in the U.S. And like a part of the symbol, it means like all roads meet, so that's why there's mm. kind of like the three symbols, and then oh. the longer one is like the representation of Valheim. So like all roads end to valheim that's cool, cool. Yeah. wait what does she get same thing on, on oh, the same, same spot okay. too okay. on the same spot yeah. oh that's mm-hmm. dope that's awesome. now you have to play god of war ragnarok just to this get is true <laughs> now you mm-hmm. should really try god of war ragnarok <laughs> either way it's I mean, hellblade but you gotta play god of war, you gotta play god of war ragnarok <laughs> Coming to the PC, just so you know. So uh, well, when it is when it's on PC, I'll play it because I uh, still need to I think, so. right or something. Oh, yeah. or, I don't know. Yeah, I think sure. Something like that. Something like, something like that. I don't know. Uh, Professor Steve, how you doing? I'm uh, doing good. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm excited for, uh, uh, you know, uh, for things and stuff that's coming up in our, uh, I guess it's going to be a busy month for I think all of us. Uh, looks like. Stuff. Yeah, so no, I'm doing uh, I'm doing good. I haven't really been playing uh, like a lot of games lately, unfortunately. I've just been kind of like so focused on project stuff. But uh, uh, I've been trying to play play some like something, uh, just anything. Like I tried to play like Fallen Aces. I got that uh, from like a, a Steam sale this summer. Uh, anyone heard about that game or know about it? So it's basically it's it's a first person. It's, it's an FPS, but it's it's like in a 1920s kind of like detective noir, but it's all done in like a like a cartoon ish sort of like a comic style. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's like very kind of like like everything's kind of like all flat and it, but it's like in this FPS environment. And oh, and, and you're like doing like bar brawls and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, sick. So oh. I started playing that on the, on my, uh, ROG ally and, uh, it, it was pretty good, but, uh, I, I think I may have hit a, a wrong setting because it put me in the hardest difficulty and I couldn't change it. <laughs> um, oh. and I didn't want to restart it. And by the time I realized that I was in the hardest difficulty, I was already like too far in to, to want to restart the, my entire mm-hmm. save again. So I was just like, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna maybe stop right here and come back to it maybe later or something. But, yeah, that's the only game I've been playing lately. Ooh, cool, Riley. How about yourself? Wait, well, you got something on my... your arm as well, right? Yeah, I <laughs> no, that's fair. Yeah, I went to uh, Epcot and I drank around the world for my sick. Body. Hell yeah, nice. my man. Yeah, yeah. it was oh, a lot yeah. of fun. So yeah, I just got back. Uh, yeah, I had a red eye a couple days ago, so I'm still so tired. And you did a red eye. Awesome. Yeah. Damn. Well, we didn't mean to, but then a hurricane came in, so our flights got delayed, which kind of suck but oh right um, yeah but no it worked out and uh we got back and now i'm just so tired so <laughs> so you i look alive i am yeah, i am alive at least i have yeah. that right i have my well i have what's left of my health so things are going well uh and i'm just kind of winding down from that you'll be taking care of here we, you know we, we have our health care here for you you got health health care. Care. Yeah, i was on hold good. for 45 <laughs> minutes today to talk to my doctor it was awful canadian healthcare. yeah that is true damn. god damn uh steve the closer hello hello uh yeah. 
I'm, I'm doing well. I almost, I almost said closer to... for some reason. I don't know why. It's even closer. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, we are all close. one step closer to, you know, Ooh. reuniting at uh, Fan Expo. That'll be what fun. I don't know why I thought you were going to say one step closer to Oblivion, because I was like, <laughs> fair, you know, facts. But yeah, okay, I'm glad you went the positive yeah. route. <laughs> you know what, though? Not too far off. Yeah, Not too you know. far off. The doomsday <laughs> clock getting awfully close to to, to midnight. Yeah, yeah. Professor Real Steven, close. the theories, you know, <laughs> that's Death right. Is coming. Know? Yeah. No, but uh, Steve, Steve, I'm I'm right there with you. I'm not really playing that all too many games right now. I'm feeling like there's a bit of a lull. Although Tomba's out. True. Oh, happy, happy Tomba. Tomba. So mm-hmm. I, I guess we can all celebrate <laughs> in Tomba being back in our lives. Yeah. You jump you jumping on pigs, Steve? Oh hell yeah. Woo. Yeah, hell yeah. What, what, what system you jumping on pigs with? You don't oh, need Tom to do that. This is you know, right? PlayStation, now. yeah, you got to <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah, I gotta get those. Gotta get, get those, those tropes. Are you gonna platinum Tomba? I hope so. I really hope so. <laughs> nice. I hope you do too. Camille, <laughs> let's go. I gotta know what to add to that, but Camille, what's going on? <laughs> what can we add? Nothing. Yeah, uh, Camille, how's the your turn. Uh, the garden is doing well. I'm okay. going to, I have to actually, after this for dinner, um, we just like, we have not been doing groceries or doing anything that revolves going to a store. So we're like bare bones, like nothing in the uh, fridge right now, but we do have frozen chicken and that's been defrosting for the last few hours. So to go with that, because we don't have any potatoes, pasta or rice or vegetables, that's like, you know, packaged. I'm gonna go to the garden, cut up some lettuce, cut up some kale, make a little salad with the cucumbers. Um, so I'm excited about that. What's the vinaigrette? Tell us the vinaigrette. Oh, so there. Okay, this is the one thing I get from the store because it's so good. Um, Costco has <laughs> this dressing. It's like an onion, um, cupy dressing oh interesting it is Ooh. so good and it sells out so quickly and then they don't have it for a really long time so we stock up on that so that's our little it's similar to like you know when you go sushi and they set like they serve yep. salad on the side yep. it's similar to that dressing i like it i like it's it solid. i approve yeah it's it's a pretty solid one um so yes that has been going on with me and practicing uh, my voice acting work. So I've, I've been what? doing yeah. more commercial stuff. I haven't done voice acting in a really long time, like since I went to school. <laughs> I'm old. Uh, so it's it's been nice getting into that realm and practicing uh, my commercial work right now. So. Yeah. And what are you hoping to, uh, what kind of commercials are you talking here? Oh, it's really boring. Like, it's kind of like an Airbnb esque uh, commercial thing that I just uh, did. What so. voice do you throw on for it? You just yeah, what do you got for us? No, it's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing because it's just my voice. <laughs> like, whenever I record any, like, I used to do a voiceover and sometimes throwing like character stuff when I was doing like the show. We'd be in the booth and like that's they'd be like, oh, try to do the character or whatever or like do the VOs for like, you know, top 10, whatever scripts. Right. Um, But when I'm doing like scripts like this and like it just sound when I'm recording, I'm like, this just sounds like me. Just like a little bit deeper. But then when I see the final product, I'm like, oh, I don't recognize that voice. It always happens. Like you never. Yeah, whenever you're you're listening to your voice in your head, it always sounds different than how it is recorded. So it takes a little bit to get used to. Yeah, it's so weird. That's sick, though. I like it. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, Well, for a little quick news here, you know, Dead by Daylight, they better be on the best ongoing game category. (laughs) Just letting you know right now, okay? Because they're coming out with freaking Castlevania. I'm actually super stoked for this. This is a cool crossover. That's my attention. They just recently came up with Laura Croft, like the other day. Like that's absolutely like another insane thing. I don't know if it's Simon Bemo- Belmont or another Belmont. It's, it's Dracula and uh, Trevor. Trevor, yeah, yeah. It's always. Did Belmont. you see they also announced uh, Five Nights at Freddy's is coming next year to this game? <laughs> My God, they're gonna make a bajillion dollars after. Yeah, this. yeah. <laughs> Whoever really it's charged. gonna happen friends. sooner though. Like right. I feel like this should have happened. Like I, I'm like, didn't this happen? You know. Yeah, it was the longest now, ongoing Resident game. Resident Evil, they've got Aliens, they've got Stranger Things. 
yeah. whoever's like <laughs> head of their partnerships like keep doing what you're doing guys yeah, i don't yeah, know how to pull it off it's wild it's, it's crazy i've had a like such a great time like producing so i produce for a makeup channel and we've been working with like a lot of dead by daylight creators mm -hmm. and that that community like i can't play dead by daylight how they play dead of dead by daylight like just religiously but like it is so tight and like they're just like so supportive of each other it is it's great to see like their community appreciate what the developers are doing with the game like that you know like sometimes when you're in like different call of duty uh communities it's like complain, 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 complain. It's like just appreciate Call of Duty? I've never heard that before. I mean, yeah. if you're, if you're complaining about Call of Duty, I've heard, heard some complaints anything. from Dead by Daylight people. I'm just letting you know right now. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, in terms of like the collabs, right? Like Call of oh, no, Duty, collabs, every collab, yeah. they're like, oh, that's so stupid. When did yeah. wrestlers need to be in yeah. Call of Duty? It's Rappers a collab. Too, yeah. It's, yeah, you know, like it's just like. Yeah, they all just, bought Nicki yeah. Minaj. Come on now. Yeah. That, like, they, they, you mean you saw me think Barbies are out there? Come on. Yeah, so. So Yo, when does Dead by Daylight get Scooby Doo? Ooh. That's god. That would be so good, actually. Right? Like Shaggy that'd, that'd as a survivor? Clutch, yeah. Oh, that'd be so cool. That's oh, a really god. good idea. It's just that you're putting Shaggy on a hook. That'd be incredible. Oh, oh a dog on <laughs> a hook. And it, and it's like, yeah, zoinks! Ah! <laughs> what, what monster would you get from that crew? Oh, the, you have to the, have the monster like with the OG. sheet over his head. It would yeah. just be yeah. an old like guy. Ooh, like a knight in shining swamp. armor kind of deal? No, yeah. the, the swamp, swamp guy. monster is pretty... I feel like that's oh, probably yeah, the yeah. Yeah. Swamp I always remember monster name. from... Bed a pup? Monster. A, a pup named Scooby-Doo? Like... What like Scrappy. I feel like every every oh Scrappy, Scrappy. as the villain. Scrappy as the oh my wasn't god. He like, the second yeah, movie wasn't so he like good. the villain or that was the first yeah. one when he gets the all like gained out. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, he's you know, on Roy. Maybe, yeah. maybe you got something. You can have like the van in the background. You know, a whole Scooby map. We're on something. Happen. Call me. I'm just surprised with that engine. It's so going. That game is connections. like. Like I don't know how old that game is. Like like I feel like I've been like on Twitch when like when. Uh, that by daylight started. I was on Twitch since 2015, right? So I don't know. Uh, so topic number one, Game Informer sadly is shutting down. Was shut down, just completely uh, gone because like they just like something has to be up because the way how this is going on, like they're like, yeah, we're shutting down. Website's gone right away, and mm -hmm. then and then Reese and then I think it was today or the other day. Um, you know, an employee just used their their Twitter to be like, "Hey, you know, after 33 years deserving genuine goodbye, uh, written by a former Game Informer member, we're mm -hmm. heartbroken by the shutdown of our pub publication. Yet we uh, we leave with uh, pride, knowing uh, we pour we pour everything out that we had into uh, in in the words of our editor in chief, be well, play well, and they just had everyone's name there. They just shut down the whole Twitter account like right away as well. Like I don't know what uh, is yeah. happening." Fuck My, GameStop. That's all I got to say. I mean, I think it's just like, well, it's, firstly, to clarify, the website's not gone. They have that landing oh, page, is, okay. right? Like, so they saw it. I think they still have the YouTube channel as well. But it freaking sucks Yeah. that, like, the Twitter just died like that. Because it's like, it is. it, it just shows you that this decision comes from someone who does not care about video games or the right. legacy that right. video games has. Like, I was talking to my friend who worked at game uh, informer and he was just like saying like it is like things are just disappearing it's like his whole life is just going it's not just a job it's just like everything like as a kid looking up to and i feel like obviously the employees are really feeling the brunt of this like yeah. i I don't, I can't even get into that conversation or else I'm going to start crying again. Um, but it just, it, it's like, do it some justice. Like mm -hmm. this had made so many people that are in the industry today want to get into the industry. Game Informer has done that yep. for so Absolutely. many people. And then just to see the Twitter just like completely wiped off the face of the earth like that, like yeah. there is no hope of like and and then it's like and there's no cost to twitter like just no exactly like, well, even yeah. like, you said like yeah okay the website is technically not down but the it's archive is gone yeah, and, and everything is gone. yeah and yeah. also yeah, that's dark. like that's like journalists like life's work like if there are if their articles are like they can't get access to their articles 
like what are they going to use for their portfolio moving forward? And they also put in a huge amount of effort into into those articles. Like the only, like you said, like the YouTube th- the YouTube channel, and uh, and they're basically the physical copies of the the last thirty three years of Game Informer is the only thing that is left. And, and and the thing is too, like it's like how long will it take for the U- I like just want to check too, like maybe the YouTube channel's down now, right? Sure. Like, but it's like if they're willing to take that those steps it's like how long would it take for the youtube channel to come down and like my friend works on the video a produ- so it, it's the channel's still up it's it's yeah, and it's got it all is, the it is, all their videos still up, but it's like how long and and my thing is too it's like i think there's always a part of us even though it seems so far-fetched because of the state of the industry and what we've seen in the past that just hope like a glimmer of hope that somehow it could come back it could you know be bought over or like it was passed over to someone that cares about this baby and i know that's not ever gonna happen um mm-hmm. especially because they've made this step but it's like that is just like a huge blow on uh, on the industry on on the whole and then i i think like people that are outside of this are probably like oh my gosh you guys are like shedding tears over a twitter account but it's more like what it stands for and what we look like what does the next generation and i know it like they're in a it's a generation of content creators but what does the next generation of journalists gaming aspiring gaming journalists have to look forward to and i would say i would argue not a lot only ign and who knows right like yeah it's like i did game spot so and that's it like yeah. really not, I, mean, yeah, like I mean it's game, you could argue game spot though but I mean. yeah well, sure. I mean, if you think of like the corporate sort of like owned like outlets, like the, as big of an outlets, like IGN still owned by Ziff Davis, GameSpot's owned by Fandom. Um, so the, it, it, and then those are the two biggest. And then you have the creator uh, run uh, like places like Kind of Funny or uh, MinMax or uh, Giant Bomb essentially, but Giant Bomb's also owned by Fandom as well. So it like yeah, you're right. Like there's as far as like legitimate media outlets for gaming journalists there's like they've been closing several like uh, so many of them over the past like just few years and w- there's like three left and and then the rest are all either fan run or you know g- like gaming enthusiasts which i don't even like i would i wouldn't even say that they would be they would be considered journalists because i think i think of a journalist as someone who legitimately went to journalism school learn how to properly be a journalist and use those skills and talents to write about video games the other journalists which i think that honestly like the whole like trolling you know grifter sort of content creators that are out there that basically bash on gaming journalists they're the ones that are like they are the worst of it they claim to be gaming journalists because they are for the gamers as it were but they can't they can't do a lick of any type of journalism that say like rebecca valentine can like there is no i i honestly i think that rebecca is probably like the best like gaming journalist out there and even then they had to set up a union at ign just to make sure that they could keep their jobs and it just sucks that it just they like and then again 33 years 33 yeah. years that the game informer has been around it is basically like you said like camille it's shaped a lot of us today, as far as creators and journalists, and it, it's it, and and I and right right now, as far as like within North America, Game Informer was the last physical gaming magazine that was in publication. I know we got CGM. I don't know how big their circulation is, and it's really and in, uh, gaming magazines are still big in the UK, but it's the last US based gaming magazine that you can be able to get and. Yeah. That's an, it's an end of an era. I think, uh, unfortunately, it's just this turn of a tide of what games journalists, is, like what the media side even is on the game side. Like, I mean, there's a reason why I don't even fucking do it anymore is <laughs> because there's <laughs> virtually no money, there's virtually no care, and there's virtually no support by media and like larger outlets. Like you were just saying, Steve, like, yeah, Ziff Davis just before we started recording, they just bought CNET. Like, th- this is a bad situation we're in. Like, this is bad shit. And for anyone that's, you know, 
to Camille's point, aspiring to not be on the content creator side, but you know, to go to journalism school and start writing about video games. Take it from me. Don't just do something else with your life because right now there is virtually no care to assure that one, your work is even going to be preserved or cared about by a larger company. And two, there's even going to be an outlet for you to be creative, to do great work with. It's unfortunate, but I, I think that for anyone going to university, coming out of university or like J school, prioritize video content right now and sure you maybe yeah. you can land a, a writing gig or something like that but like at this point in time i just feel like there's just not enough care from larger companies and an audience too to read the written word about video games i think it's it's all reactionary content nowadays and it's all i think a lot of people find value in what we're doing you know talking heads talking about the industry having a conversation versus having these you know opinion editorial things and not that i'm i'm totally against that viewpoint but i think that there should be at least a space for real journalism to your point steve like rebecca valentine there's so many other great uh journalists especially many of whom work for game informer and now yeah. have to go yeah. freelance and stuff like that um the what the my biggest takeaway and something that I've even experienced now and just the closure of a game informer and kind of solidified it once again is like just back up your shit, man. Like if you're if you're a content creator, a writer, anything, if you're doing anything, back up your shit onto a hard drive because I've had copious amounts of work just pulled off the internet by larger companies that are just like, nah, never mind. We don't yeah, really care bad about idea. it. <laughs> yeah, see you later. Yeah. Uh, we're packing it up and uh, you know middle fingers all around. But yeah, just. Do yourself a favor, keep it keep it solidified on like a hard drive or on, you know, Google Docs or something like that, just so that, yeah, you have some sort of portfolio to go forward with if you want to keep uh, keep toiling away in this industry. I know it seems very dire, but uh, yeah. oh, oh man, it sucks. It's sad and to it's see how it took like so many years for us to like get into the space and be like, yes, this is a profession. Like we should be respected. And now it's just been stripped away like the past three years. And it's very, very yeah. disheartening. Yeah. Well, I think, I think the way people consume content has shifted so radically yeah, too. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like, it's a race now to get everything up as soon as you can. And then you have to have the best EO backing that and on like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Overhead costs have to be as low as possible to make it make sense. Like, so all of these things is like you go to journalism school, what's that? It's, you know, you spent a hundred, a hundred thousand dollars getting a diploma. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, this guy can crank out eight times the articles with the SEO preferences that we like. So, and we pay him like nothing. So there you go. You're good. It's, it's, it's like, kind of like, you know, uh, we don't necessarily have like the other than like video content and, you know, podcasts. We don't really have those uh, dedicated gaming out or the future of dedicated gaming print uh or print i guess um outlets is is just obviously not there anymore but i think what it is if that's something you do want to get into you want to cover games and you want to write about them in print and be on the journalist side you do have to pick up something else because i i do believe in the future of like you know when our generation gets older if we're still interested in print and magazines which i still get magazines um that's that's where you're going to see that content and like more of like not necessarily like a gq or like a new york times you know like i think that's where you're really going to see that bridge and it does come when the generation that grew up on games and grew up with the internet starts buying that that stuff and that that's that's it's like time, time did that whole line of pokemon covers right and you could collect yeah. each one or something yeah, right. like eight of them oh, it's like man. i mean that's probably the future of print in particular yeah. i think so yeah. Yeah. i think because i i even remember like there's a uh there's another one that uh that's sort of like a fan a fan kind of run thing uh outlets called lost in cult and uh oh, yeah. um they do like regular uh sort of like pr like more like special print editions and uh of of uh, of kind of like articles and stuff so it's sort of they're trying to be able to keep that alive and again you know we have mutual friends at uh comics and gaming magazine so that like that's the only only one that is currently run but it, it, especially like it's the one two punch of we had Game Informer on Friday of last week, and then we had Bungie basically a couple of days before it, it just laying off like almost 400 people. Yeah, it, it's, all their it, CEOs 
showing off cars two days before. exactly like <laughs> yeah and like gamestop like executives and bungie executives are still fine like they're they're totally okay like they're like i even saw a story of like the 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 that employees at bungie uh were were like were did not trust leadership at all it's been a bad week for them and there was like some in leadership that said you know this week was better than i expected and it just an they idiot. just they just yeah they're an idiot. they just have no they have no clue and as we said it's like it's getting harder and harder to even want to be able to work within this industry and it it just is so weird because video games make so much money yeah and yet it barely like according to you know whatever it's barely enough to be able to keep anybody who's making these games keep making them and well, i don't know what the solution is i think unfortunately we are at this precipice where to your to your point steve because i totally agree there's so many people who want in on this whether it's on the media side the the writing side content creation side and then on the developer side as well we've now reached this influx where it's like no we're past capacity where unfortunately if you're on the media like there's just no room for you it's either you go to like a hobbyist or an enthusiast website just to get your content out there because you're passionate or you're a developer and unfortunately these the larger studios just can't fulfill all these job roles anymore because there are so many people who want to make games so it feels like there's almost like a culling going on right now across these you know coming out of the pandemic and eventually it'll, it'll peter out and it'll balance itself out and everything but right now it's going to be a bloodbath and it will continue to be a bloodbath until those levels kind of iron out where the industry can support all the people who want in and, and celebrate this great you know pastime that we all uh, love and appreciate but right now mm -hmm. it's just it's just not going to happen. There's too many people who come out of school and they're like, I want to be a developer. I want to be a writer. And there's it's not enough. The there's table, not right? enough. There aren't enough seats. Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. It's just like yeah. it is. It's a popular industry. People, yeah. people want to work in it. When I tell people like, oh, I do. I work in the games industry. Oh, what do you do? Like, like people right. get excited about it. It, it is yeah. interesting. So like all of that stuff is like it. I mean, things will change. AI is going to be a thing as well. That's going to shift the way that we you know, build games, interact with games, stuff like that. Like all of these things are going to be impactful to some extent. So I, I am curious to see how it shapes up. Like Steve was saying, I'm trying to think if there's an, uh, there's like a analog to what's happening in the video game industry to other industries. Like I'm trying to think of there's like a, hip, a spot in there in like TV history or, or movie history where we're like kind of feeling that like the, the, this sort of like it's overblown um, unless it's sort of like, unless maybe we're kind of in the same era that that they're all in now like you know the, the only reason really i would movie, say no i would say I would the only reason i would say. say no is because we gaming evolved and we grew up in the gaming industry at the right time of access when it was hey we have the internet now we can just go on write a blog post we can upload it we can go on youtube create a video everything we got TikTok on our phones and everything the ease of access to create content to talk about this industry is is vast and same thing with developers i mean you know you, you think of games that used to be hey you had to work for a large studio but now you just can create a game in your in your office or in, in a garage and everything and upload it to steam and it doesn't have to be the biggest and best but you can create a game the Hollywood industry wasn't ever really like that. Even when you go back to the 30s or 40s, you had to have a Hollywood production to start making that. It wasn't until like the advent of YouTube or like uh, Vimeo. Or Vimeo was it? What's the uh, yeah. what's the other one? Yeah, Vimeo. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was thinking Venmo for some reason. Um, <laughs> it, wasn't until, it wasn't until like that started happening that people started saying, oh, now I can create my own videos and, and shorts and, and series and stuff like that. So I, I really don't think there's a one-to-one -one really reaction to, to the gaming industry because it's so unique. And it came at such a very specific time for, for our culture, like the internet culture. Yeah. 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 And all this uh, stuff too, like there's been a lot of consolidation across entertainment generally. So like everything falls eventually somewhere. So I think a lot of it too, we'll see, we're kind of right now we're at a shedding phase where there are obviously probably his, historically never been more layoffs in the games industry. And these people will go and they'll start their own companies and they'll, you know, they'll make new Ubisofts and take twos and these things, you know, like we, that's the point. So it's, we're in the shedding phase uh, as companies mitigate risk, you know, the stock market recently took a, a turn. I don't know how that's going to sit, but 
We also uh, something with the. I remember I heard about it with the yen and like. There's a lot of buying well, the, back yeah the Japan, the well, this Japanese stuff freaking out yesterday crashed, yeah. essentially yeah mm-hmm. and then yeah. then the Nasdaq followed so yeah. these things will be I mean I'm not saying that's the reason this just happened but I'm what I am saying is like but stuff like that can hurt with, risk. Like, with budgeting and everything they're like oh like we don't know what's going on in the market hey this these two projects I don't yeah know, we, you know yeah right well the big so. companies they're just mitigating risk at this point like they yeah. don't want to take on all this debt or anything like that like they're going to slim down and then that then these pieces will fall and then new things will grow and I, that's usually the cycle for these things uh out of curiosity because I, I know we could say you know f gamestop and everything but they acquired the game informer back in 2000 these if they didn't do that do you think game informer will still be around or, or, or would it have lasted this long? I, uh, I should say. I think it would have got folded into it, like maybe another yeah, site. Yeah. yeah. All right, can you repeat that? I missed that. Basically, like GameStop acquired uh, Game Informer back in 2000. So would have Game Informer have lasted this long if they didn't do that? Uh, I think yeah. What Steve said, it'd probably be acquired by another company. I think another the fact company. that it was acquired by GameStop meant that it needed to be acquired to keep going. Mm. Um. And they would have found another company that would take it because of the legacy that Game Informer holds in gaming in general. Um, It is just the time of the freaking industry is like so, so gray that I think this is why this happened now. And and that's the, the sad thing. It's like there's no company out there that thought Game Informer maybe there's a great way to revamp Game Informer that may be interested in Game Informer as an asset, like that's my thing. Yeah. Well, the only thing is, is that like they tried to be able to do it over the pandemic, they couldn't really recover. So GameStop laid off a large chunk of their staff in 2022 to the point where the past two years they've been running with just a, a like 12 people. That was that was yeah. it, and they had to run the entire print division, the uh, the website, and the video division. Uh, all with all with basically a budget for twelve people, and they tried to be able to introduce a because it used to be yeah obviously you know we would get Game Informer when we would go to GameStop and we would get those like as a for free or whatever like you buy that was the only place to be able to get buy a them. game here's a magazine you know? exactly <laughs> yeah. um, and then and then they tried then this year I remember they tried to put up uh, like hey can you subscribe to Game Informer outside of GameStop uh, uh, memberships and and I don't I, I guess I don't know whether it that was successful. Probably was successful maybe for Game Informer, but maybe not necessarily for GameStop. And I think the thing that kind of gets me, that hurts me the most, is the fact that it just all of a sudden happened. Like, there were people that did not know they were losing their jobs until they saw the tweet. was literally on a mid-interview. God. And I yeah. heard about it. Like, that's- Just call it an epic quest and shut it all down, guys. Like, it's fine. Like, uh, it's, yeah. Well, it, and the thing is, right? Like, you're looking at Game Informer, and you know, we're talking about the climate of the industry now: print versus video, reactionary content. And it's like, you know, I'm looking at. Quite frankly, I don't think I look at Game Informer YouTube videos. Like, I'm trying to think as often as like other video content. So like, I'm trying to think of ways that like other companies might've looked at Game Informer as an asset outside of the legacy that it holds and see its worthiness. And it's like, yeah, like the name, I mean, they also have 700, 40,000 subscribers. So it's like, that's a lot of subscribers. Like print to subscribers? Li- uh, on YouTube, no, right? YouTube. Like if, oh, video, okay. if video reactionary content is the thing, I feel like there's probably an outlet there that if, you know, GameStop wanted, or sorry, yeah, GameStop wanted to uh, sell this off to and they shopped it around. I think Game Informer could have got sold to another company. I and mean, and who I think knows, right? Like maybe that's the plan. Like maybe but, they have but is, a brand or something. They, is, I, I don't but think I, that that I don't, right now. Like, I don't think that's the plan. Down. How how could that be the plan if you're losing all of you pretty much shut down the Twitter? You you're shutting yeah. down a huge maybe part of that asset of of the brand, right? Like I my think thing too is, is the is tweet like, on the Twitter was like from a, a former employee, right? So if and then the, had access, it's a problem. Yeah, so and then so GameStop it. came in and yeah. just is like instead like, of shut like, it down, we shut it down but, and just delete but, the whole account. I think that's so stupid. But, 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 but even if let them say goodbye properly. But even if that is the stupidest thing, yeah. like if they, they had hopes the on password. selling, exactly, they could like, have changed the password. Have. They could have yeah. regained control of it. So for me, this decision is solely like GameSpot 
uh, GameStop being reactionary, like we are losing so much money from Game Informer, we just need to shut it down instead of getting ahead of it and being they, like, okay, I instead of guarantee. trying to tie it into, you know, getting a magazine when you're buying games or tying it into the actual stores, we need to find a way for this to be successful. And if it's not successful with us, let's make our money. Let's make part of that money back. Like it they, just they, it does not make sense to me at all. They no, can't I even agree, yeah. they can't even keep their retail stores uh, open. Like it, it, like the only thing that's been keeping it going even for the pa uh, past couple of years is that stupid fucking mean stock thing yeah, that but, people just but kept that store, going but a store like I, I totally agree with you they can't keep a store open a store is so different there's so much cost that goes into operating right but that's but that's the, the mentality stores. that's yeah, the mentality okay, that they're going with so it, like right, yeah because yeah. they I, I mean i agree with you like it just it just baffles me that they that they couldn't even uh like keep keep that uh, available or sell it as you said like i 100 percent think that I would love to, hey, if they couldn't keep it, sell it. Sell it to somebody to be able to, like, know how to be able to properly run it. To me, I just see it as sort of like, it's like legacy media. It's like it's if, like, a like a Bell owned a Game Informer, and they're like, well, we don't know anything about digital gaming, so... Plus, can't you just change your account name? Like, I don't yes. understand closing the Twitter. Like, I just don't get it. I, don't. Well, I, I think I don't. It's, it's 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 Social stuff in particular like, <laughs> is super complicated. Like, you don't know who has the passwords at that point. Clearly, they didn't. It so it's like, it. That's it. Like, I don't know. Yeah, well, like you can change it. Like, the, like, yeah. Yeah. The employee you know, that, that got laid off. And has that yeah. and has that. It's yeah. like, it's just like, it's it was like, like well. you can't just, yeah. it is tough to navigate. So you can soft lock that stuff for a moment. Like, if you can still pull it up and see the follower count and stuff, like, it's locked. Yeah. So My guess is that it was some, it, it was some GameStop executive that probably saw <laughs> that was like, what the fuck? Don't we close it down? Well, anyone, and they tried to get anyone. an intern to do it yeah. and they didn't know anything. And they're just like, I just delete the account. Yeah. Delete I mean, it like, now. It's, Are you yeah, sure? Yes. <laughs> with that, with that reasoning, uh, Riley, you know, I'm curious with everyone else. Do you think that I know Steve, you briefly said like, you think maybe they still have a plan of selling it but riley like based like on that thing, and do you my, think my have... thought is like maybe not maybe not something that's like for like they're ready to roll it out tomorrow but like nintendo power came back as a podcast for nintendo mm -hmm. like these True. things like owning the ip well, that, they, had them, they did have a mag back. another magazine run too uh nintendo force well no that that was like a spiritual successor right i think it was yeah. just yeah, or I like think, was, I think it was. Yeah, so, or, which was yeah. cool. I had a lot of the old yeah. staff, and it was like a, like mm. a Patreon initiative. Which it's I love that man. Wasn't like, Fanbyte supposed to be kind of like was a was a site for former people too? Like, yeah, isn't that how that got started? And then uh, then that got they bought. Fell apart. And, yeah, then they right fell apart. Oh. The game guides and AI and stuff. And, oh. and honestly, oh. that's the thing is that you're seeing more often is that these you know. These outlets will fall apart. Their staff will ra rally together. They'll go off to this other place, and it's just not sustainable. I mean, they're yeah. like this. It's it's the a tale as old as time. Yeah, and like uh, there's very few people in the industry that has been able to go on from like a major journalist like outlet and do their own thing and make it sustainable where they have staff. And like the first one that comes to my mind is kind of funny. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like yeah. that is like it's it's a very hard thing to do. But it's um, also, also a drastic pivot from yeah. journalism. There is exactly. like, there's, there's it's no longer journalism. Exactly. Right, but it's they also were established journalists. They worked at IGN and they were able that's how they were able to start off with their with the audiences as they as they could oh, have. For and, sure. and yeah. it'd be but very hard. Also, I mean, it, but then also his content, Greg's content, was very much journalists but entertainment True. right yeah. like there was yeah. so that brings in that kind of funny brand right like i think it's very hard for journalists that are going for like especially print media to bring in that entertainment unless they have like a crazy idea and the right people around them it, it's such a hard formula or or to even keep it like the one-to-one -one of like i'm gonna go from this you know written outlet uh with a journalistic uh focus and go into video and keep it journalistic mm -hmm. It, yeah. it, it, like, that doesn't work unfortunately yeah. The, yeah but the funniest part is that at, at a certain point all these journalists all these hardworking uh people who are breaking stories and everything they're all going to go away and then the content creators they're not going to have anything to fucking talk about so the, the entire yeah, we'll industry is going to implode we're all witnessing it step <laughs> yeah. by step well i think like also people just need to start having discussions like 
we often align tech and gaming uh, in terms of like, you know, journalists, right? We see tech journalists yep. talk about gaming and, you know, they're, they may know about gaming. They may not know about gaming, but they're just sent the assignment to cover, right? Um, I think like in the gaming industry, we do have to start having these comparison conversations. PETA's, <laughs> Sam is just like... Yo, uh, I <laughs> just, just forgot to turn that off because uh, we we got to talk about these things. But um, yeah, no, 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 no. Talk about your car insurance. Anyway, yeah, sorry. Yeah, car insurance. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I think like as an industry, we often hyper focus on gaming where it's like within the industry, even in, um, you know, reactionary content, we should start looking at that broader, uh, you know, genres that are in alignment with gaming, like tech. See how tech journalism is going. See, see how ways that it work, and ways that it has a huge gap in gaming, and see how we can like try. And I know people are already trying, but try to see some alignment. It's to the the thing is it, the thing is it's just uh, like right now the written word is kind of starting to disappear when it comes to like coverage like news of uh coverage like there, i think at least in the, the as you said the video game and tech side like the biggest uh like tech reviewers are youtubers yeah i mean they're, they're like the big literally the biggest one mkbhd and and started off as uh as just i think his first video was reviewing a remote for a laptop uh and th and he grew basically his own little uh empire there and I, I think that, I mean, it, it, videos, it, video content is pretty much uh, right now. It seems to be the, is the thing that like everyone needs to get into in order to be able to be anything war like to be like to have any sort of potential of gaining an audience. Cause otherwise, I, I, I mean, I, I, like, I think, I don't know if podcasting is next of just audio podcasting, but that kind of was able to sort of get, cause you, you got to remember like when, Cause I've been around back in my day. Uh, I've been around when, since podcasting started and that's when I started making content. And at the time it was very hard to explain how to be able to subscribe to a podcast. And it was all audio. It was no video. RSS and, feed. <laughs> uh, yeah. You basically had to code an RSS feed yeah. by hand, like by like you, you had to learn XML code in order to be able yeah. to learn how to be able to add something to an RSS feed to be able to make it podcastable. Nowadays, people sort of think are, are become like think shows on YouTube are synonymous with podcasting. So they were able to the podcast was able to and, and it was dying. There was a period where pod, mm -hmm. there was not a lot of interest in podcasting from a lot of places. And then there was a few that sort of like that kind of springboarded uh, uh, it forward. And 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 then the, basically when video kind of came into play, Apple video, especially the I, Apple uh, video. I, yeah. I, uh, I, video. I think serial was probably the biggest one that sort of went mainstream beyond yeah. just, uh, uh, like, yeah. uh, the sort of the main, uh, like kind of uh, audience for podcasting. And it, it like once video kind of came into play, I think that's that was, that's what really changed the game for, uh, and sort of saw the, the interest move from the written word from, audio specifically like or audio only and to the, the, where everything is now video whether it's short form or long form and it sucks it like even go back to like the game informer i would love to have seen game informer sort of morph into more video like journalistic video content but the the the, the thing is is that i think sometimes even some of the best journalists are not necessarily like want to be on camera and they just prefer written word and i think that you know, I think there is always going to be a format for someone to be able to like, I think that written word is, is a lot more comfortable for some people than others. And I hope that they can be able to find something that can be able to sort of let that talent flow. But I don't know. It's, it, it's it, tough. It, it's, it's yeah. Tough, honestly, In the world yeah. of like iPad kids and TikTok, it's like everyone's attention span is like maybe seven seconds long. So like, how do you read a, a good in-depth, like juicy article? Cause that takes way too much time for some people. Well, yeah. and it, it's like all docu style. Like I think of yeah. videos that I watch that like go deep into whatever topic but it's like heavy journalism and it's all docu style right like it's like that is very hard to do that it, when you have like how many games coming out each year 
on yeah. each day, you know, like too many, or is it like how, um, or you, you know what, like who does a really good job and has a journalist background, Alana Pierce, her content on mm, her yeah. YouTube, her deep dives on like conversational content and, and what it is, it's like, I think she even pivoted her channel's content, mm -hmm. um, not away from gaming, but more gaming adjacent, where it is focused on like asking the question or talking about conversations that are trending in a different light. Sure. Um, and they are gaming adjacent, but not necessarily gaming. Um, and I think that that's unfortunate. Like we keep talking about like, oh, you know, the industry is on fire, it's dying. But is it devil's advocate it is it is by the way but is it that this is a sign now we have to actually pivot yeah. similar to how alana pivoted her content but pivot how we talk about games in general yeah. like because i am so tired and i do reactionary stuff but i'm so tired of reactionary like just yeah. non non stop reaction 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 and like I, it's it even it got to the... hit a point where there is that exhaustion from it like we're yeah. already starting to see that with like just creators getting exhausted with having to have this content out within like an hour of new new news dropping in order to make it seem relevant yeah. i think the algorithm is going to start pushing viewers to be be just done with, yeah. with reactionary it's even, content. It's even gotten to the point where reactionary content is just even being mass produced to the point, like uh, the uh, the thing I, like, hey, I, I will, again, even use the phrase, I'll never yuck anyone's yum when it comes to like whatever you want to create. <laughs> if you want to create like it was something, by all means, go for it. But the thing that I hate the most is lazy content. And the ones that are pissing me off more now, I don't know if anyone here has ever seen these yet, it's when you post clips or of, of movies or TV shows and all you get is a green screen person in the tiny oh, yeah. corner where they're just staring at the but camera, not anything. saying or doing anything. And I hate that because it's like they post so many clips yeah. of themselves doing this. And it's just it's 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 engagement farming. It's view farming. And it's I don't even consider that reactionary fair content either. Yeah, that's, I don't even consider that fair use because they don't they're not adding anything to it. I don't even think that they're Except watching the head, videos. They're I think they're head. just recording themselves and just putting yeah. it on the videos and like mass I think they just have them. like themselves. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just have themselves the green head recorded. They're like, all right, just copy and paste all yeah. the way. Now, but, do you that, like it. that better or worse than like Reddit stories where it's an AI voice and just like someone playing Temple Run? Because oh, there's a yeah, lot of that the, the too. Two diff yeah, I, I yeah. hate that too. Because it's just like it, that's, it, like, it, yeah. that's that's what adds rot, right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Like that. Yeah, things, but oh man, I I, I don't know. I, again, that just to me yeah. is just absolute lazy content. I try to skip it as much as possible anytime I see there's it. So but it many. keeps there's yeah, so it keeps many. coming up, and it's it uh, makes me so mad. See, I, I was just about to say, maybe Marcel, next episode, we just do the entire podcast. You throw on Temple Run on the right oh, side of the screen here. We there keep we it go. going. We get we bump up these you numbers, baby. Know you know, I got, say this, I got, is, big I got this is real gameplay. And I'm I just gonna move left and I'm gonna move right. Yeah. Better. I got something better for you. How oh, about right. The Legend of Zelda? Oh, oh that, that, segue. Right that segue was you know, genius. We're yeah. <laughs> God damn horse. Why is it not horse going? Me up. There we go. Horse me up. Smoothies, the way. horses. What else right? do you need in a video I, game? Right? I, I, I cannot object. tell you how much I love this art style so mm. damn much. Yeah. It just, mm -hmm. yeah. it hits the, that cute factor, but it also just has that aesthetic that I just absolutely love. Like, I, 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 yeah. I didn't oh, react. Yeah. She's hot. Well, not even, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what? Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Her wise. Say that again? I, I, Wait, I what? Know, huh? On me? Like, what? No, no Marcel. <laughs> Zelda was in the oh, desert. God. She's feeling hot. Sorry. Yeah. Did yeah. you, you make that say. Joke? I think you said the video about... or something like that. I don't know. That's anyway. what I said. What do you mean? What? Good saves. I'm going back. I just to heard. Right I just now. heard. Huh? Say what? that again. In the desert, hot? she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the desert, she's hot. hot. No, I just feel like hot. 
Yeah. Don't you okay. touch Zelda. Okay. What's wrong with you guys? She's but okay. So the only happy anyone. news we have for today. Don't ruin it. <laughs> so what? What I love about this because like here's the thing. I'm I'm a very late uh comer when it comes like fan when it comes to Zelda. I the only Zelda game I ever really fully played was Breath of the Wild. Um I tried a bunch of older games that never like, a wrong uh, time to join. Steve. I know, oh. yeah. It, it, <laughs> I tried playing Link to the Past, which I know is a lot of people's favorites. I can't play it. Uh not just for, for content reasons, but literally I can't play it. Um uh, but uh, so I love I don't know how much like of the lore is pretty much the same throughout all of Zelda games, but it just I love that there, like you could see that there are elements of Breath of the Wild kind of in here yeah. that I do like the UI is similar. Uh, the user experience is similar, but also uh, like the fact that they, they included sort of like secret or like basic ways that using the tools within the game to do any type of puzzle or any type of task any way you want. Like it really gives that player agency Especially when you get when it's going to show in the video in a, in, in a minute the sort of the the binding uh, the uh, capability being able to uh, basically con like similar to like in Breath of the Wild where Walk you can basically off a cliff yeah yeah like you yeah. Can, like you can connect the thing or but you also can be able to like they you can connect to them and they can fly you around if you're a bird or like a spider you can climb up whatever like it gives you so much of uh, like of the world that you can be able to do and you can in a multitude of ways that a player can be able to do a task in the game. And I love that that is what this video game does. It's not just a linear path. It's a do what you want. Like, we'll give you the tools. You figure it out. And it gives that so much player agency to, like, I I, I just love this. I can't wait. Like, I can't wait to play this. All I'm just really, for this five-minute video, by the way. Yeah, and, like, you know, I'm also really surprised that, like, I thought this was going to be just, like, how the, the previous one with the same art style was, like, mm -hmm. just go straight forward. When I saw, like, oh, yeah, this side quest, I was like, what? There's side quests happening as well in this game? Like, there's, there's a lot to this game. Goddamn horse right here. And knowing that, there's, <laughs> yeah. another, there's another horse as well. This needs to be Zelda needs her white horse. You can't, you yeah. can't have her. 100%. Her, her the map also looks like horse. massive. Yeah. It's coming right here. There's her horse. Oh, it's a uh, horse. horse. Look at it's it. Yeah. Horse. But, but look that's, how it is. that's what I think, like, this game is going to be a love letter for Zelda, like, fandom the, the um Phillips, just because <laughs> because it's bringing it's bringing together like yeah the crafting of like yeah. smoothies or like the cooking mechanics mm. um but then you also <laughs> have you smoothies? smoothies smoothies i was <laughs> it has three o's in it this time smoothies. 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 um by george takei uh, channeling him a uh, smoothie oh my yeah so but like it's it's honestly this oh, i'm gonna cry just thinking about this game okay it's it's a love letter to zelda fans because it's bringing in all of these different elements you're seeing obviously steve you talked about breath of the wild you're seeing the cooking mechanics you're seeing um the different game like or like the abilities the echoes that uh zelda has that is similar to the sheikah slate um um, or like your different abilities that you have in Tears of the Kingdom, but also the world. The different villages draw on so many different Zelda games. Mm -hmm, it's yeah. insane. We have two different versions of the Zora, and they're establishing that there's two different types of them, yeah. where it's like Zelda fans have been pretty much, it's been decided that they're based on timeline. How these creatures look is based on like whatever timeline the game falls in. Where so Nintendo's like, oh hell no, we're saying that these could happen anywhere and anytime. And then they're also bringing in one of my favorite things, like the Dark World, which, like, if you're a Zelda fan, you know the lore. Like, there's lore to like a dark, a dark kind of like a dark mirrored world of yeah. Hyrule um, and you see that in like the the fragments or yeah. whatever that shadowy thing I think at the end of the trailer like she jumps mm -hmm. into it so I just want to know how big is this game how many hours are we going to want to dive into this game because when we first saw it I was like oh this is like you said Steve very cute very much like Link's Awakening um, you know the new the new version of Link's Awakening um but also there were things where I'm like, mm, they're holding back. And I still look at this and I still like this, 
they're holding back. They're not. This, showing I did us not expect that they were going to go things. into this. Like that is cool. And I'm curious. This was like, like the same surprise when we played um, the latest Zelda game. You're like, Tears oh, there's the another kingdom. Tears of yeah. Kingdom. Like, yeah. There's another map. Like they didn't. <laughs> another another map. map. <laughs> yeah. So, so they're holding back, and I feel like, ha- like I just love how they're just like nonchalant, and you're like, here's a five minute trailer. Have it at you will. And like they probably have another five minute trailer queued up oh, yeah. that's gonna have more stuff. We're gonna be like, wait, you could do that. So even like the outfits and the accessories and yeah. being able to like have they have like their different effects, like god damn it. It just oh, damn it, it, is so dick. it just this makes me want all so damn amiibo. That's there's awesome. two things. Yeah. There's this, two yeah. things I wanna make it uh, happen, Riley. I'll, two things I'll, I want to say. I'll get on the horn with Nintendo. Yes, yeah, please. Yeah, we need that as Amiibo <laughs> ASAP. There's two things I want to say. A, this just makes me want to go play Link's Awakening, the the remake. Like I just legit want to just bring it up right now on my Switch. And also, B, I wonder because okay, so I, I like correct me if I'm wrong. When you go into the is is it, is it the Mirror World, the Dark World? I don't know what was it called yeah, when the you Dark did, World, the Dark World. Okay, did your abilities change as Link when you went into the Dark World? No, I think you no. had. You no, it was just the world the just changed. That was it. Yeah, you had you had the dark, uh, like you had your same abilities, but some of the like there's different types of enemies, and like it's different. Like how the every everyone react, like everyone in there is a little off, is a little okay. different. So, um, also, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So I say like the question I have then is like, what do you think is the special? like thing that you would have to do or the things that changes the gameplay if you if uh, in this if you jump to the dark world well i think it's going to be something with light right like when you think yeah. of zelda as a character and you know what her uh part of the triforce represents like she is the light she is that wisdom mm. so i feel like they're gonna bring in so oh my god the light arrows may be back yo i'm i'm so excited for this game like i think you know that, that just yeah, that just ahead. now basically makes me pissed off that Tears of the Kingdom didn't have it when you jumped into the uh, when you jumped down into the uh, below oh, the, the high roll that you did you weren't Zelda or that you basically you didn't have Zelda's pa- like light power because that would have been so interesting. But anyway, I mean, I mean, it was pretty cool. I know the story, with, whatever. Like, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The blooms and like all that stuff too. But um, <laughs> I think yeah, you know, when I I look to this, I even think Phantom Hourgra- Hourglass. Or yeah. yeah, so and like I had spare so, tracks games and everything. Spare tracks yeah. I had so Ooh. much fun yeah. with those games on the I, DS, right? Those, those were DS games. Were yeah. they? On, they weren't even three D. Three D. They weren't DS. They were DS games because the three DS was the one with the wall. Phantom Hourglass. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh that was, was like, like between worlds, worlds right? Yeah. Worlds, yeah. 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 So it's like I did play that. I, it's, it honestly is a love letter. Like you're seeing spirit tracks, you're seeing Link Between World esque hints, you're seeing Tears of the Kingdom, you're <laughs> seeing Breath of the Wild, you're seeing Ocarina of Time. Like we have two different Zoras. Like I do not know when when we play this game. I feel like everyone <laughs> Zelda fandom is going to be dissecting this apart to be like, okay, where does this fall in the timeline? But like, <laughs> if this is here, how could this happen? But it's Doug is going to call you and stop you right now. No, 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 <laughs> Doug, Doug's like. Like, I mean, would you stop? Really Either I that or I Doug's going to call you up being like, I know, right? <laughs> and, and I think, like, what it is as well, it's, like, very interesting that they're, they're – this is just – I think when Echoes of Wisdom was announced, everyone's like, oh, okay, cute. Oh, the you know, we're getting yeah. – this is, yeah. like, yeah. this is, like, that filler – yeah. Zelda game a um, in, in between game. of doing something like more hardcore, you could argue that or like seemingly hardcore, like Tears of the Kingdom. But I feel like this is going to be like a little surprise and like really get people into it because there's so many different combinations that we're seeing mm-hmm. with these abilities that you could do. Oh, I, 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 this video changed of, my like, yeah, yeah I, everything. I was like, this, oh, I was, I yeah. was, yeah, it was just cute before, but I'm like, no, I am now fully into this. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the I the best it. thing that this game could possibly do is take the mass uh, player base that has been built up by Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, and then bring them back over to like a top down, more linear style, maybe with mm-hmm. some dungeons, that kind of vibe. Because I feel That's like. Me. It, well, exactly. There's a there's a whole audience of people that just don't know that Zelda is a or like the Zelda franchise 
is about the dungeons. It's about these like smaller experiences. It's not this larger than life. If you can believe it, you can do it. I, I respect and I, I like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. But if I think about the catalog of Zelda games, they're unfortunately just not what I want out of a Zelda game out of a core Zelda game. I'm sorry, Camille. I'm a Ocarina of Time Majora's Mask boy. But when I look at Echoes of Wisdom here, I'm like, <laughs> there's so Jones much, <laughs> so much that I like about this game that harkens back to those older experiences, whether or not it's on the, you know, the DS or even like the Game Boy. So I'm, I'm glad we're going back to a return to form where it's not just, it's not fluff. <laughs> Everything is meaningful. Camille? From the floor, she was checking. Hey, um, I'm hey. just checking the floor because I almost lost my damn mind <laughs> uh, just now. Uh, what the heck? Is it on the floor? <laughs> no, I couldn't find it down here. It's just, it's somewhere. somewhere. It's somewhere around. But I can't believe. I can't, okay, fine. We'll world. we'll talk about that later, Steve. I'm okay. I'm a hardcore Ocarina fan. But okay. how? Okay. Anyways. I agree with you saying that if you are not a Breath of the Wild fan, which how, um, this is probably more up your up your alley. But I also think you should be not cautious because I mean it, it looks hella cool. But I think <laughs> you, you should watch your back, dude. Yeah. But I, I think you yeah. should I should Run well you should like watch that. your back because I'm gonna <laughs> find you. Like and yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you like Breath of the Wild Tears of Cam. But I think also like how open and how many combinations you have in this, if that's what you think you didn't like, because that's what I hear sometimes. People say, Oh, I didn't like Breath of the Wild, I want more linear, I want something that's like more ocarina. I don't know if this is gonna give you a more linear experience. Like it's looking like to me, it is not necessarily a linear experience. I love that you just had that whole entire serious conversation while sitting on the floor. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just I'm like so you just look so tidy in your video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she looks like uh, Chibi Zelda right now. We got this going, going down, yeah. down to the Camille, back. You're the world, best. So, like that was such a good <laughs> argument, but I was just like, I'm just sitting there, like, you're just sitting there. Camille's the going down no, to the but, dark uh, yeah, world. Thank you. Welcome to my TED Talk. I'll come back up now. <laughs> yes, there you go. Your 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 TED floor talk. Floor Camille. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> floor Camille. Yeah. Our latest new podcast. Yeah, there we go. Floor. Floor talk. Tales from the yeah, floor. Uh, there we go. But, Coming but at you from the floor. But Steve, doesn't that Steve the closer? Doesn't that bother you? Like what? that it may like uh, what was okay? What was, it bothers me? What was it that you didn't like? What was it that me? I forgot. Like, the, box, <laughs> the kingdom. Was it that it was open or no? There no. It, it was too long. Those guys did, I'm sorry. Tears oh of the Kingdom God. had no right being a, over a hundred hours. Game, I will. Game, I will admit. I did not it. finish Tears of the Kingdom. I Neither not, did I. I didn't yeah. need to. I got what I needed. I had a blast. I want didn't to. Need to be but hours. It, it just was. It, it was too long. It was way too long. And I'm, and if this game can top out at like a crisp forty, I'm happy. Yeah, you're probably getting probably get cool a nice. 40, yeah, a nice thirty. You it's think 20? Yeah. Really? I don't know. You want the side quest? No, maybe a bit more. You're probably right. Listen, Camille, it's it's one of those franchises that at this point there's a game style for everyone. So yeah, if like you if you option. want the dungeons, do the dungeon yeah. games. If Camille, you want the open I, world. I am not saying by any means that neither are a bad game. All I'm saying is that one Tears of the Kingdom way They're too not long. for me, and but, I don't want to finish But I, I don't want another <laughs> one of them. I don't want another one of them. Doug Bowser can. I don't want another one. No, I don't want one. No, Doesn't don't give me a three peat. Keep it's it. Not his cup of Gerudo <laughs> canteen. It's it's okay. No. <laughs> I mean, if it doesn't have smoothies, I ain't in it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, smoothies, smoothies really won me smoothies. over. Uh, I'm I, gonna play this the hell out of this game. This is now I saw an interesting fact the other day. Um, yes. that we are further from oh my Ocarina God, of Time 3D. I know. Then we were when Ocarina of Time 3D released uh, compared to the N64 version. Isn't it? So for, that's that's how how long in between releases of Ocarina of Time re-releases. Re See, Cam Camille, what you could have instead of another bloated 100-hour open-world Zelda game is a <laughs> uh -oh. fully remastered, tight Ocarina of Time remake. Or, 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 imagine if they insert a story. Like after Ocarina, I couldn't the imagine the story in a Zelda. Is it Majora's Mask post Ocarina? 
That is, yeah. Well, yeah I mean, just joking. It I love it. Like, the they could there. imagine if they like instead of just going timeline what's been established by fans and confirmed by Nintendo. Imagine if it's like they're like, oh, and we have this extra experience in there in the style of Ocarina of Time. Like well, when I what see would you, you when would I you base see this character, or would well, you, when I see you do with that? well, look at Echoes of Wisdom, right? We're thinking because when we saw that trailer, and I believe it's still going after Link to the Past, right? Like the timing, right? So it's like Echoes of Wisdom is kind of that. It's kind of like that insert of like, hey, you also have the Zelda experience. Like, imagine giving, oh my gosh, imagine giving us a chic experience. That would be fun. That would be cool. Oh, she's going back to the floor again. Oh. <laughs> Not in this game. But, no uh, so, so, correct me if I'm wrong. They've never, uh, uh, like, did they ever, like, try to be able to, like, r- completely, like, remake Ocarina or uh, or Majora's it, Mask? No, you just had those fans. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fans Sorry, go 4Ks. Ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it. So Nintendo's never officially like. So that's the only era of was Zelda like quasi. Yeah, kind they, of yeah, a remake. It had new abilities. Yeah, like, like, because like, I know that there was, I know there was the Wii ver- like games like Skyward Sword and right. and uh, Twilight Princess and all that. Like so, the, they they've been kind of like been sort of re- well remastered to be playable. I think right. Like I think it was not was Twilight. it uh, not Twilight, but it was Wayward Sword. Really got was, HD, but Skyward Sword got the capability for you to use a controller. Right. So, but the the three D era of uh, of Zelda, like in the N sixty four days, they've never they've never touched those. Well, Ocarina and Majora's Ocarina Mask Majora's got the three D, and they only really Live added the three D capabilities, different camera controls, yeah. and then camera uh, controls. yeah, camera oh, okay. controls because they had to fix the N sixty four controls. And then like Wind Waker yeah. and like Twilight just got HD. But, but uh, other than, so uh, right now on the Switch, other than playing it through NSO, that's the no only way to play those that, games. Yeah. Would be really great for a new console to have a remastered version. That's, that's, what, I'm that's what I was going to say. But they're I coming love out. It. They're Sammy, coming love out it. With, Softballing. You just they're coming out with uh, <laughs> 60 frames Breath of the Wild. Yeah, you're gonna yeah, yeah you're, you'll just get HD get versions 60, of yeah, the, RTX Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild. That's yeah, 1080p, all you're which is what Steve Vegg <laughs> has always wanted. That's what will make him complete the game. Great, you need, more, you need more frames. Great, let's do it all over again with no achievements too, because because oh, Nintendo wants. You know, we speaking of frames, did anyone? The shrines are the games, achievements. Got it. Oh yeah, yeah, the the seeds. <laughs> oh wait, 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 that's the yo, that's the other thing. Oh my gosh, with uh, <laughs> Echoes of Wisdom, what I'm thinking about is the dungeons, dude. I think this is we're getting a dungeon heavy game. I think like, so. I'm excited. That's rock and I'm roll for me. That. And That's, like even yeah. I think, rock and roll. imagine if like in the dark world, whatever this dark world looks like, if it's kind of like Silent Realm, like the Silent Realms. What's the Silent Realms? You know, oh, so from Skyward Sword, you know where you had to like collect the seeds, not exactly like that, like more fully fleshed out. So like where you, you know, what I'm talking about Riley, right? Uh, vaguely. Okay. Yeah. I, Skyward Sword is one of those games I always restart and I reach to a point I'm like I'm done. Me too. <laughs> I get, what? I know because like the waggling after a while, I'm like, I'm done with this, you know. I had enough. Gee, I wonder if there was a way to be able to make that accessible. If you know, people would be more inclined to be able to finish those games. Hmm, okay, you know, I'm just saying, <laughs> it's, it's fine, whatever. They gave us a control, might be onto that, something. It hurt Steve. my hand. I, you one. know, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just, you know, uh, just it'd be I great. See what you're, you know? see what you're throwing you know, out. It just there. means yeah. that, you know, it's a, <laughs> to just like, make accessible ability for everyone. I mean, it just, it just, you know, benefits. Do you know anyone who does that, Steve? professionally do you know anyone who that can buy solve uh, i don't know i think maybe you know i i can't think of anyone on the top of my head but i mean i can just probably you know uh, give me a like minute a professor, i'll probably maybe perhaps? think about it i, I don't yeah, know maybe, maybe I, I, yeah. I would hope so and like you know to at least be feel like they're knowledgeable <laughs> about the uh about the uh about crazy, the situation so crazy idea uh, why don't you do it yeah we have a How professor you, in here right whoa, now whoa yeah. okay all yeah. right well i mean let's just not jump the horse yet okay it's uh <laughs> Well, Zelda's oh, jumping the horse. Zelda, you got the horse. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I got to think about this one for a minute. I, that's an entire yeah. career change. I need to, to you know, <laughs> step well, up and do this for me, man. Yeah, hurry up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, okay? Then. I will. Do it, you coward. Thank do you. it. Uh, yeah. Fine. Uh, Fuck you. While, I will. While while Steve is doing that, Warner Brothers is trying to figure out who they're selling. All right. So according to the Financial yeah. Times sources. Who claim that the media giant is looking to offload smaller assets in the attempt to uh, reverse their near 70% decline in the stock price since 
Warner and Discovery merger back in 2022. And I guess they consider these small because they um, the report has listed Avalanche Software, who made Hogwarts Legacy, but, Rocksteady, yeah. made Suicide Squads, TT Games, the Lego uh, franchise, the Other Realms, Mortal Kombat, uh, Mallow Soft uh, Productions, Middle Earth, and uh, Warner Brother Games, Montreal, Gotham Knights. Well, I don't think they want to get. I don't think they get rid of Avalanche because that. Yeah, that's Hogwarts been the only Legacy is not a small <laughs> game whatsoever. So yeah. I don't know how they. This is. I'm just. This is all quotes right here from this article. Thanks. Uh, thank you to Riley for saying this thing. Not blaming Riley, just I contributed it over. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I contributed. I did. That. I did something. <laughs> hey, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they closed how many, them. How, how many people are playing Hogwarts Legacy? Uh, like, I know it was really? good, but like, does that mean anything in the industry? It, it, it topped time? sales charts month over month. The, this so game, it's it, continuing. It's oh my it's god! Yeah, it, it was the biggest Dude, game of last year. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, I As know, it's, but it's January not twenty twenty four. Twenty four million copies as sold. Oh, so it's January. Okay. It still right. it currently has 7831 yeah. people playing it right now on Steam. Okay. It is a it is a <laughs> it is not Sorry, I yawned there my bad. I was like, no. Wow. That's what wow. she thinks about Hogwarts right there. I mean, it's, it's it has been in decline. Like it basically I think it yeah. it, it well, stopped I mean, declining. Sure. It yeah. dipped below 100,000 as of like March of last year. Yeah. Um, but it's That's been consistently like money. around the twenty thousand mark. It's for... bonkers to me because it's not a live service game. No, like that no. is not a live. So that is just a full narrative like single player game. So and imagine there's multiple people ways to be able to play. It, you can, yeah, you can basically right. play it like four times with the different uh, houses. Um, but yeah. do you? I mean, it came out. Oh, wow. no, March mm. of last, March year. Of last year. year, but that's what I'm that's saying. Good. Like that's enough to play it four times, and I'm pretty sure like fans. Yeah, but that Switch version kicked in. Switch version came out. I know people who bought Switches oh, just for that game. Yeah, okay. it's, it's one of those types of games. It would hit the the Switch audience, I think. I'm, yeah, and I've got you. Got to think they're making a sequel, right? Like that was. Oh, I, I think the LinkedIn oh, post already confirmed that. Yeah, that, that they're looking at jobs. I would think they'd probably be looking at tying in some sort of live service element too, because that is that's Which like is so Grand funny because isn't level, that Call of Duty level of big? Isn't that the Quidditch game that was stolen from Hogwarts Legacy and then just spun off? No. So that and that's going to be a thing, and they are uh, they are working on that. Yeah, obviously, that and that's going to be part of PlayStation Plus. Is it? Yeah, uh, like it's going to okay. launch in PlayStation Plus the Quidditch game. So oh, that the they're British, basically right, right, right. Yeah. they're basically copying the basically the success of Rocket League, Fall Guys, stars. like some of these live service type of games. So Foam, foam Stars, <laughs> a critical darling. Um, yeah. Foam <laughs> what? Um, but uh, like these sorts of uh, no, well, there was another one too. I'm spacing on, but yeah. uh, basically they're going to try to copy that formula, and I think it'll work because from what I've heard, that game's kind of incredible. Like it's really fun to play. It was. It's yeah, pretty yeah, fun. Quidditch, it yeah. was. Yeah. Wait, they haven't kicked game? me out of the playtest a... Discord yet, so I'm a... hoping <laughs> they put like little teasers there and then. Wait, y'all got to play it? Yeah, there yeah. was like a there was like a, a beta or like a playtest. Yeah. I didn't know that there was a be- open beta. Fuck, I need to get into it. You're busy these. saving the world. So don't Caboose, worry about it. Caboose was literally like, hey guys, I have an <laughs> extra couple codes, of codes. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, it's, uh, uh, okay, it's okay. Apparently, it's quite good. Yeah. So, 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 I with mean, the, I think it yeah. be good. Probably be but, successful. So then with this, like, we're all thinking it's probably going to be. So who are we saving? I think I think this could <laughs> potentially like, oh, man. Oh, no, Canada. Piece, you know, right? I think it makes sense. If they're going to sell anything, I think NetherRealm would probably be the one that would be like. You think I, so? Yeah. yeah I, I think because right now, I mean, they, they're the Mortal Kombat house. I mean, they, yes, they had Injustice as sort of like the direct tie in for, for, for DC, but uh, for Warner Brothers. But. I think that they can like they probably if they see the writing on the wall they'd be like yeah we're okay we're we're being sold out maybe to go independent. Um, so you uh, think like that'd be a nether realm decision? I would hope so. Oh um, yeah. Like, like if they're able to or if they're allowed to, and then Warner Brothers is like yeah okay. Then like, like it's or they could be spun off for productions. Sure, no? I don't I'm, think they will keep them. Uh, the question realm. is who's buying? I thought, I thought they would. Well, I guess keep that, nether realm as I well. They I also- might. My guess also- is the TT would stay because that's a cash cow yeah, with Lego. Yeah, Lego. Avalanche okay. will stay because it's Hogwarts, and they want to. Ke- they would want to keep that going. I would think 
on it, and this might be a bold prediction. I would think that they would want to keep Rock steady because of the legacy. No, no not, uh, like not. like not based off of you know like past performance with Suicide Squad. I think it's like they they they. It would be basically. I don't think it would be the right choice to be able to sell them now. They would want to sell them when they're at their peak, and if they can, and if they can be able to create a no, a new game that is good. That's enough for them to be able to to sell. Like you don't sell things when things are going. Like you don't sell I mean, studios the when they haven't says, really done well. The industry says otherwise. Sell things when things are good. So I mean, hey, all those games that you, all those studios you said that are cash cow for them. Who knows? They may just be like that game. No, but that's, um, but, that's but, different. But, that's that's different, different than how... like a. That's different than than like a, a a game that they could basically keep making money off of. Like Hogwarts is a giant IP for WB. But they I mean, with other keep, they, companies, we've seen them yeah. like just just close but studios that are Aval successful, right? But making Avalanche basically be the Hogwarts house, like no, I'm oh, not saying that's Avalanche. That's very fitting verbiage. I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying Avalanche, but I'm saying Rocksteady. I would say is technically on uh, potentially on that chopping block. But they that's the thing. who they would they sell had... it to? They, they they would have nobody like nobody like but, nobody but would want to sell it to. It's think, like ah, Suicide Squad no, didn't work. I don't want to buy it. I, I think, think people too. would people would more buy like because we have to think of like what sammy was saying like selling it like what's a good asset that is still like that name of rock steady we haven't been able to do anything with it we don't want to keep it anymore or test it out anymore let's sell it i think other companies would pick that it. up and be like we're gonna do something really good with rock steady because firstly you know um what they've done with the arkham series has been really good and we they just need better direction Right, but that's why I'm saying that they would they, they would not sell Rocksteady. They would wait until they can no, do it. Because they, I no, don't think, like, I think I, here's the thing. Here's on the other side, I think that they would sell WB Montreal. Yeah, I, I do think who? WB the name is Montreal. WB Montreal. They would change the name. They would change <laughs> yeah. the name. It would they, they would hundred percent sell that, that studio because <laughs> consistently Montreal. Consistently, the WB, WB Montreal hasn't been able to deliver a hit for them, but they want like it, they would keep rock steady because they had delivered a hit. Yeah, Suicide Squad, like, yes, granted, if they're not in a great spot right now, like just publicly and financially. But I think that if you like right now, they were more concerned about legacy. And I think that they would keep that. Until they can be able to maybe Are they make a better with game. Legacy, though, I don't think so. Like, I don't I would, think they give as far because it's a name. Legacy. It's a it's name. Warner people, Brothers people look at Rocksteady as a name that they can that, that WB can be able to use. But that's they already why I don't have think a name. They would they be the first to just, 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 just interrupt. Just interrupt. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, just to interrupt real quick. Is I do think that there are multiple ways they can divest. Like maybe some of the studios go independent together. in contract. Yeah. Maybe you make a second group outside of WB who owns some of it still, and you have investors True. in it. Like divest, like divesting these companies doesn't have to be as simple as like, well, we're selling off another realm and Rocksteady and Traveler's Tales or whatever TT Games, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. Um, and also, like it could uh, keep in mind they also WB Games just acquired Player First Games, who does multiverses. Like. A week ago, yeah. yeah. I don't know why they did that. If they want, I know to all of it. You know, like so. These things are like I don't know That's what true. their plan is, but they could be like Xbox. You want to ensure the content comes to ours and own ten percent of the studios, or so. You know, like I'm not saying that would happen. You're like, but, like we'll broker like, a deal. Yeah. The yeah, thing is, is that don't raise, don't raise our Game Pass, please, Riley. Don't don't go to Xbox. <laughs> I'm raising the Game Pass. I'm the really, mean, I'm getting Phil on the phone right now. Like TT Games yeah. with like Microsoft, they'll just do what they did with Minecraft. They've done so much That's with like true. that. They could do yeah. a lot with Lego. The, yeah. the really yeah. difficult thing with WB right now is that. With the exception of, I don't know, maybe even Nether Realm, and that, that's borderline right now. All of their studios rely on IP right yeah. now that WB oh, owns, and with again, with the exception of Nether Realm, if they approach any studio and they're like, "Hey, would you like to buy any of them?" N realistically, none of these studios are are worth a damn. Like Rocksteady unfortunately doesn't have Sefton Hill anymore. So it's yeah. like you're you're buying them for the talent. You're not sure. buying them for IP. You're not buying them for any known yeah, games. Yeah. Like right now it's it's all a talent play. So I think to Riley's point and something that's been largely discussed the last time that WB was rumored to be, you know, looking to to sell things is that it would be more of like a partnership basis where it is, okay, maybe maybe they do sell, you know, WB Games Montreal with the 
partnership of, hey, you own the studio, but we're going to license out a Batman game to you guys. Yeah. We're going to license out yeah. X, Y, or Z, a, a mutant, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game yeah, to you guys. Yeah, we'll make a 10-year deal to... Something like that, that because that. right now, yeah. unfortunately, the only That's studio ideal, like, that... Be fans. <laughs> yeah. The, well, the only another, two studios that are really worth a damn right now Here's are another Avalanche angle. Here's another, another angle that we haven't right, really... What? Sorry, what was the other studio, Steve? Another realm. Another realm. Like those oh, are the okay. only two. Another realm is the like, only one that years. has their yeah, own original IP with Mortal Kombat. Like they, that's the that yeah, is that's theirs. Exactly. Like that, yeah. it's not they wasn't they own, doing anything. Who owns all the Midway IP? Is that that's attached to Nether? Is it right? that Nether Realm? I, so. I think is that I think it's all attached to Nether Realm. Let me see. Which yeah. is like kind uh, of interesting because that's like Rampage and some weird ones too. Can, Here's another angle that we haven't that that we haven't discussed yet. Do you think that maybe WB would go the Marvel Games route, where they don't have a, a specific studio, they just license their uh, IP to whatever studio that wants it? Like they originally were with EA, like they had that 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 infamous ten year deal um, where uh, they or was it? No, I'm thinking. Sorry, I'm looking thinking Lucasfilm um, or Lucas from, or Lucas Games, but uh, they. Like they, that's what they're currently doing right now. It's basically Marvel Games is basically just licenses their properties to whoever studio that wants it. Do you think WB would follow suit? I mean, I think they have to if they're already considering they're selling divested. their stakes. They have yeah. to do that. But uh, Riley, to your point, Warner Brothers actually owns it. Warner. Brothers. Well, it's interesting because like, like Warner owns, Brothers owns uh, these Midway. studios, yeah. but they often work with Disney IP. They exactly. made like Cars video games. They yeah. made Disney Infinity. True. I think Avalanche did. Yeah. Like but, it is like it is like an arm of that company that does other things and yeah. the Lego games like Star Wars, Marvel, like all these other things. So I am kind of curious to see what the plan is because like if you lose that Lego license, like I don't know what you. Yeah, think. they have. They have to. Know, like, yeah, they have. They have to. Yeah. Yeah. They have to. And I think that's the, the only... thing. It's like more. It's more. I think now it's like obviously they're selling a stake because they feel like they need to do this to make more money, right? Than they're making right now. Yeah. So they're gonna want to. It's like more of like what they're protecting, right? And I think you're right. Avalanche because Hogwarts Legacy has been doing so well, like you said, Steve. That's what. That's definitely going to be protected under them. I think TT Games is the other one, and maybe Nether Realm because it's Nether Realm. And but when you look at profitable for like yeah, on multiple fronts for them as well. So so yeah, but, but is not it profitable as profitable from like a WB at, like, standpoint, or is it profitable for another one? Exactly. I think the movie did okay, but I don't mm. know. But yeah, yeah I, true movie, movie, movie. Yeah. But then they could also, if NetherRealm were to go like uh, independent or be sold off, they could probably even in the deal have we still have movie rights. Yeah, I think the only yeah. the only factor like with with TT Games, especially with the Lego side, the I think the only studio that could potent or a company that could potentially buy them would be Epic because they've got Lego Fortnite. I think that would be yeah, they would well, be that, the only that's interested the thing buyer. Is Lego, my, I don't know how long Lego will remain invested in TT for the sole reason that like they partnered with 2K on a racing game recently, yeah. and now yeah. they've. They bought oh, like a billion dollars of Epic. Yeah, so, and they're all in work on, on any Fortnite. of that stuff. Like, uh, like no. with no. them at all? No. Yeah, just that... like the core games. Uh, and that if you go on Humble Bundle right now, you can buy every single Lego game ever for twenty bucks. Seriously, like, that doesn't seem. You should do it. Yeah, but I think, I think, it's, yeah, but I think also it's copies. like it's like uh, you know I was playing games over the weekend to my nephew. He's at that age. He's very he's very much discovering games. We're going through a yeah. dance dance revolution because. Or not Dance Dance. Well, I did pull out the Dance Dance Revolution. He had no idea what that was. But um, just dance because he could play with his sister. But Lego's <laughs> that other thing. Like, he's been downloading so many Lego games to his iPad just to play. Like, Lego, like, sells so much amongst a younger audience. Yeah. But you're yeah. right, Riley. Like, I, I wonder, and, and Steve, I wonder how long Lego will want to keep that deal with TT. I mean, right? the other like, two things to consider... Is, oh, is that yeah. one? I don't think this uh, Skywalker saga sold all that well. I think that was a major disappointment for TT. And the other thing, the Lego Horizon game isn't even being uh, developed by That's TT Games at, at all. No. So you, what you're really seeing right now is a full pivot That's from from bit. TT. Yeah, yeah like yeah, to be honest, I I don't think that there's a there's really a hope or prayer for TT Games right now because it just doesn't seem like they really have anything going for them. If other studios are the ones able to we create that magic. Yeah. Their whole thing was, hey, we can do like, you know, realistic or authentic Lego experiences. But now, to your point, Camille, you talked about, you know, uh, the the Fortnite, there's uh, 2K, they did their racing game. And now, you know, it's a uh, studio goat 
Gobo that's doing yeah. it, Lego Horizon. It's like at this point, like it's it's oversaturation, it's, and one's got to go. But, but it's like, is that it, are we seeing that sunset on the old style of Lego games? Like, I think the success yeah, of not. the Horizon uh, Lego game will really create a, potentially a vision of where Lego could, Lego games could go next. Yeah. For Lego, it's now a question of how long is their deal with TT Games, right? Like, if that deal, I think they won't. Uh, I won't. I don't think that deal would um, be canceled uh, before, like, because they would have to pay penalties or whatever. But I do, and I, I think that's why another case. Bring back the story why Warner Brothers would keep it because that deal probably has another few years on 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 the shelf uh, for Lego. But the then the question is like, yo, if they're already starting to consider selling one of their stakes in gaming. How long is it that we see another stu- like you could sell one and you could close one? Like, are we not seeing the full story here? That's my question. Is this a sign that yes, they're thinking of selling one, but potentially closing another? And we're just I not mean, seeing yeah, that. I, th- story I think that yet. would always be an option, but if you can divest it and make something off it, I guess that's the play. But again, like it's a weird time to be. But what are they making off? Studio. What are they making off Monolith? Like Monolith has the Wonder Brother, uh, the Wonder Woman game, right? Are they making uh, Wonder Woman? Yeah, yeah, they are. Right. Yeah, so yeah, it's like are. I, yeah. I think that like can be canceled. Like I could see that as a call, just how Warner Brother Discovery operates, and they're you know very. They have so much other than video games going around. Like I could see them completely saying like, hey, look, we're trying to, we're really trying to sell two, but we're not telling people we're trying to sell two right now. But we want to see the feelers on these five assets that we're thinking of selling a stake of. If, you know, we only are able to sell one or we see interest in two of these, we could potentially sell two or we sell one and close. Like I feel like. That is also a Warner Brother Discovery move, which makes me really, again, scared that we may be on the cusp of another announcement of layoffs. It's hard to say, right? And even if you spin something off, like that, that is the, the employees or the people who started the company buying it yeah. back. Like they, it's they, it's not just mm-hmm. given to them, you know, like they have to get investors and like buy it back. Mm-hmm. And then they're essentially owned or owe someone else. So it, it is like a weird situation to be in. And I think it's all going to come down to them buying player first games is interesting to me. Cause I think they see that as like, so that can weird. elevate all of their IP, right? Mm-hmm. That, that game has everything in it. It's a live service game, which they seem to be leaning into. Um, so I am kind of curious but to see. What it, but it. There's so many other studios that do live service games that like, I get multiverses. I get the hype around it. I'm excited. I get excited for multiverses, but in terms of performance, right? Like, putting on a business hat like is that this like i don't know it's just i don't get it man this is why we're not the head of these multi-billion dollar companies um because it doesn't yeah <laughs> it, it just doesn't make sense and you i just have I, to pull yourself up off the yeah. floor and you can get there <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, I mean, I, i'm just scared with what else this could mean i think i'm just so cautious it, with every piece of news we have when we see studios moving i'm just so scared what yeah. else this can mean yes we'll see yeah with that being said uh this week it is d23 speaking of rally with disney and you know d23 is this week any predictions any announcements from like marvels star wars kingdom hearts anything uh no? i don't know Marvel rivals I, maybe release date maybe you do you think there are games gonna be there like, yeah. I, I don't even know. Yeah. Because like they had a, like a D23 showcase like uh, last time. They're doing the same thing again this year. Have they yeah. announced that? Yeah. Wait, they did? I think they did. Didn't they? There's three don't days of it. I don't know. Marcel, don't assume, dude. What's in there? I don't know what's in there, right? <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so apparently, according to my Nintendo news, I don't know how uh, how reputable that is, but rumor gaming is going to be a big part of Disney's D23 Expo next week. Well, I'm I'm looking at the event schedule, and I type. Zoe said, "Sorry, what what, what, is there or no? What did you say, Steve? (laughs) Sorry, my bad." Oh what no! Happened? I just basically said like uh, they say the rumor is gaming set to be a big part of Disney's D twenty three Expo. Oh, then it's all going to be Epic Games Disney Universe, right? That's what they're saying in this article. Uh, Hold on, who? Uh, but what outlet? Uh, because I'm on the website and I can't find anything with games. And this has the schedule for all three days. 
That's what I'm saying. Is it's it's a rumor, and that, I don't know how trustworthy yeah. that my, my Nintendo news oh, they is. Have but Disney Epic rebrush. That's oh, but that that's. Mm, I that was announced at the THQ uh, event the other on Friday, especially with the uh, Dark Siders Four is coming out. And the people yeah. who made Little Nightmares, they're coming out with their own game, and the cold name for that's oh, cute yeah, little I saw pig. That. And the, yeah. and the pig's like all sewn up. I'm like, that's not cute at all. No I don't see anything <laughs> game wise. <laughs> that's not even remotely cute. I mean, what a cute. terrible name. That's the opposite yeah. of cute, actually. <laughs> that's the opposite of cute, actually. They, I don't know who you got to look at that and come yeah. up with a title. I didn't that. know, like, is, they, have, they have different developers not making Little Nightmares 3 because Bandai owns the rights for it. Yep. That's wild. So, the, so they're making their own game. So. I I thought I I I I had to, I'd try to find it, but I thought they they're gonna have their own announcements for D twenty three or something this week because it is happy. their kickoff was on Sunday and then they're doing something for the next three days, of uh, starting on Thursday I think. I remember the schedule is. Oh, they have a dizzy epic Mickey rebrush, the return of a beloved classic uh, yeah. panel. That's all you oh, need. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, oh, they have more content the trading game. I hope that's so bad. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they have games here because I'm just like I was scrolling through. I can't find anything with games, but I mean, it'd be cool. What games would you want to see from Disney? Would I mean Kingdom um, Hearts? But um, Marvel game. Rivals. Yeah, um, I think Marvel Rivals date from Rocksteady. Yeah, <laughs> save them. <laughs> save, save us, Moon Knight. A Star yeah. Wars game. They're probably gonna have something Star Wars Outlaws. I would they imagine they're. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't see Maybe anything with new? that. Oh. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't really look to D twenty three as like um, a place to get gaming news. You know what I mean? No. Yeah, it's just they, kind of like really cool like Disney Kingdom, Plus stuff. They, they had a whole Kingdom showcase Hearts around before. it. Spider Man yeah. two DLC. Book it now. They did not the Kingdom Hearts. Book it now. Caboose. Book it now. Caboose. Oh, no. <laughs> Caboose. Caboose just no, joins. He's, he's like what? He's under, he's <laughs> under the weather because there's no more Spider Man news and everything. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he just got a big Winnie the Pooh cloud over his yeah. head. He's like what? Uh, uh, Riley, I have a, uh, and this is for everyone, but I know Riley will will jump at this. But I have a question for you, Riley. I want to see ahead. you jump. I want to see you jump, jump Riley. Riley. You're ready. All right, I'm your jumping moving. shoes are on. Uh, <laughs> I'm not jumping. Uh, I'm not do jumping. you do you think with the do you think we since the reason why we haven't had a mainline Pokemon game on NSO? Do you think that Pokemon is they're doing their own app? Oh shit! That's the why we haven't had it. Oh, is that why? No, I don't. And then um, to, to put on PC and maybe on mobile. So I would hate my, that. The trick with that is Nintendo. Why would you, why would you hate that? Part of that app. Like, well, they maybe have, they'll have time exclusively involved with with that because they ha- they publish the all the games. Mm. So like, I think more likely. Why aren't you jumping for- yet? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to jump for. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think that more likely it is we'll see Nintendo's subscription service move to mobile platforms and Pokemon will be a big like front facing feature of that. Hell yeah. Is what oh, I would. That's think. even crazier than my question. Pokemon All in right. the palm of my hand. I mean, right? like the emulators are legalized now. So like everyone like that created a boom. If you put Pokemon on mobile devices and you make that put more. NSL on mobile, you, you say, though? Yeah, I think probably eventually get all the legacy software on there that elevates everyone because people are kids are going to go see the Mario movie. They're going to see Pokemon. And then it's like, what? You're going to spend five hundred dollars on a switch, too. It's like, no, you have an iPad at home. How do we access this content? So Mm. that way people consume content is changing. I think we'll probably see that before we see like a Pokemon app. And Nintendo has experience with mobile apps, like we've seen with Mario yeah. Run, right? Like, so I think not the that, best. Uh, uh, but I mean, Mario I mean, they, 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 they also they partnered the with DNA. Yeah, they have. Yeah, the they partnered with DNA to like, co-launch a studio to build to yeah. scale their online services, and DNA is like exclusively a mobile company. Yeah, mm, I think I think you're absolutely I think right. I think that's how we see happen. it. Yeah. You said Riley's right. All right, we're good. Uh, you always be honest. You're with the surprises. That was the two-hour-long con. Yeah. I loved it. Fucking fell for it, Camille. Sammy, what's going on? Uh, not too much. I'm hoping to finish uh, Nobody Wants to Die. Yeah, that's what it's called. Um, still playing Core Keeper. 
uh, no that no one wants to die. Yeah, no, no one wants to die. die. It's, it's, it's very like, like, I mean, I don't. Like, yeah, I it's like very. Like I know I don't want it. <laughs> it's definitely yeah. more like Blade Runner than yeah. I initially thought. Like I was like, yeah, oh. this is gonna be like Bioshock, which it, there is definitely some, some Bioshock-y. aspects. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. it's very more like film noir, but like cyberpunk. So it's really yeah. cool. It's not a long for game. I think it's like it's only like six hours, hours right? yeah, yeah, something hours. like that. So I'm, I'm I, getting there. I was gonna get it when I went to like the cottage uh, like a week ago and to, to, to play it, and I was like, I just couldn't, I, I couldn't, you know, bite the bullet, and be like, okay, the thirty bucks, I'll just pay pay for it, or whatever. I don't know. I, I want to play it. I've heard so many good things about it, but it just it hasn't pushed me into that. Oh, I need to have it just yet. I will say, like, the mechanics are really cool. So I was yeah. also very like, mm, do I really want to play pay thirty dollars for like a six seven hour game? But so far, I've only played two hours, and I'm like, it's worth it. This oh, thing, okay. Batman's like detective mode in Arkham. That's how it is. Oh, yeah, it's cool. I did not know that. Okay, that might change a little bit. But yeah, that's know. what I'm up to. That and work. All right, sounds good, Professor Steve. Besides saving the world. <laughs> uh well uh new and dungeons disabled uh mm-hmm. the second adventure is uh currently live we uh, got episode two coming out tonight uh when this okay. episode airs mm-hmm. uh it's it the, this current adventure things like keep each episode keeps escalating uh it it gets wild and wilder like as each episode uh uh premieres so uh jump in on that because it's gonna be it's 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 gonna be good if you're interested in D D stuff uh, content uh it's a it's a it's a great time uh but also uh i just launched a, a new series on uh on my twitch channel um which y'all are, are invited to to join in on at some point is uh, i have this new series called professor steve's lecture hall of random topics uh where i nice. every week will do a presentation a lecture about whatever topic i want to talk about could be you know practical like streaming advice content creation advice or accessibility stuff or just random topics like i did today where i t- told a story of how i pranked two radio stations with bacon <laughs> actual true story and i told it for 48 minutes but was it canadian bacon that's all that matters no no it's just it's bacon bacon it's ba- it was oh, bacon wrapped right. bacon wrapped roses to be okay. more specific well that's good you don't waste canadian bacon that's no, no that's only for eating yeah so There's and the video is up on my uh the vods are going to be up on my currently right now i may potentially build a youtube channel for it but if you want to check it live it's every tuesday morning uh but uh eastern standard time but uh you can be able to check out the vod of it right now it's on my patreon patreon.com slash steve sailor and it's for free to be able to check out right now so hell yeah riley that's recovering uh yeah I'm really gonna recover. <laughs> um no uh, but uh i think probably just uh just chill and do a little bit of work. I think the Astrobot controller pre-orders open up this week, which is pretty exciting. So uh, looking forward to uh, to doing that. I got you. Hold on. There yeah. you go. There I, you go. I, <laughs> I got you. All right. We'll have Walmart, folks. But get your controller. All right. I love that. That's a meme for our show. <laughs> so probably, probably we'll just doing game. that. <laughs> one day Walmart will see us, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Us hey, there's prime pieces. spots to put a logo somewhere, Riley. Yeah, just just saying. Oh, We're going to be like, never, ever. Cease yeah. and desist. We're going <laughs> to. Please stop putting our name in, in your yeah. show, please. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. So doing that is what I'm yeah. doing. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Steve, the closer. What are you closing this week? I'm closing the book on a lot of work this week. Uh, not game related, tech related stuff, but um, otherwise, I'm I'm just looking forward to Fan Expo coming up. That will be a lot of fun. Um, I don't know. Are we all going now? <laughs> at this know. point, probably. Yeah, I hope I'm, so. I'm yeah, yeah. Is it PAX the same weekend? No, they no, they no, it's one is week the after. Day weekend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, one week after. The following week. So you better be there, Camille. Uh, anime you New York is happening. So fan expo. You just have to go down the road. I know, but because it's in the city, it's like I might as well just stay home. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be willing to travel thousands of miles mean? away to be able to go to con and be like, "Yeah, let's do it." But like, are if it's you? just down the street, it's nah. I, can't I feel that. I get it, but it's like you know. the Toronto meetup. Is that what you're saying? No, I said oh, I'm going to that separate. because you're doing that. You're well, that's doing just, that. That's literally down the road from. FedEx yeah, or... but I could still do a spend, I could spend Twofer. like yeah. at least seven hours at home and then go down. 
Because I live 40 minutes away, guys. I feel that. Yeah, it still takes me an hour to get downtown. Yeah. Well, it takes me 40 minutes with all the lakeshore and stuff. And stuff. Oh, true. Maybe uh, true. flooded. You know. Yeah. It might flood again. You never know. Yeah. So. Wow. There's also like in their construction, the gardener or something like that, too. That's been like for like next couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Niall Horan had to walk to the Scotiabank Arena, y'all, because of the traffic. So pfft. I'll dare you to walk five minutes. <laughs> uh, Steve, I'm sorry, Steve. Were you done, by the way? Sure. I don't <laughs> even know what I was saying. <laughs> I don't even know what I was going to say. Wait, wait, wait. There, uh, is, there is one article you just published that I, would, I oh, need to know a little bit more gosh. on. Your Dyson <laughs> headphones. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, you, are, you have been hyping those up for like a while. crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is it about them that are just that good? Yo, they're so comfy, man. I, I'm a, I'm a big comfy guy. <laughs> when it comes to Even with the glasses, they're so, so like, comfy, it's man. They're so comfy, man. So with glasses comfy. as well? The, or? <laughs> so, Sammy, that's the big thing. I hate over-the-ear headphones simply because they put too much pressure on my glasses. It gives me a headache. I can't wear them for more than an hour or two. Uh, huh. Dyson figured it out. They they solved it. They, they have the solution. I can wear them all day. Um, it also has like a surprising battery life of like 55 hours. I've had them for two weeks now. I am almost on the brink of having to charge them. I, I mean, wow. wow. So wait, we're talking That's Dyson, crazy. the vacuum. vacuum maker. Yeah. Yeah. So last year. Breathing thing? So that was last year's model. Okay. This year they got rid of all that uh, the the air filter stuff and just made like a like a super condensed like really great high end pair of headphones for uh, five nights no six six ninety nine in Canada I believe, um, and yeah it just it, it works really well great audio. The only thing I'm kind of disappointed in no spatial audio and mm -hmm. oh okay. I, I mean, I had the the Sonos Ace uh, that I that I reviewed earlier this year, and they have spatial audio in them for roughly the same price. And I was like, eh, well, maybe. For maybe. how much are they? Are the Dysons? I believe they're six ninety nine in Canada. They're five five hundred and more expensive bucks. than the vacuum. <laughs> but no, I think they're, they're, are they the same price as like the AirPods Max? I think. Yes, yeah, I, yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's why I'm an Android girl. Boom! <laughs> this woman. I didn't say anything about Ooh. iOS. <laughs> Wait, yes. you're you're a you're a you're a that shit you're a green bubble. Wow. Green bubble. Pixel you're for a... life. Yeah. Go back. Yeah. Go back to the ground. Get out. Yeah, it all makes sense now. Everything adds up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right, yeah, fine. We'll, okay. we'll just we'll just enjoy our life with our blue speech bubbles. All right. Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying. Oh, okay. that's so <laughs> Apple of you to say. <laughs> fine, green bubble. Uh, <laughs> Green, green bubble. You have a green bubble. bottle. Wait, it all makes sense. What the? Hell? <laughs> uh, Camille, what besides uh, not going to Fan Expo? What's going on? Um. Oh. Oh, so, your garden as well. Yeah. yeah chilling on the floor. Chilling uh, on the floor. I may lay down <laughs> just here. Two TED talks. Four talks. Four talks. my Android. Four talks. Um, no, I think I'm going to, well, I, uh, I'm going to go to Boston in a week. So I'm going to try to enjoy, Ooh. um, I love Boston. I don't know. Why I said it like that. I love Boston. It's great. Great city. Um, no, but, it sounded like you were excited, like legitimately. Oh, I was, oh, like, I was okay. excited for you. <laughs> I felt like my soul said, kill me. Um, but, <laughs> wow. Tell us what you really think. <laughs> but, uh, no, just because I, I want to kind of spend summer, the end of summer at home. But uh, yeah, so I'm trying to just uh, spend as much time around home, going to be doing more VO stuff in. Yeah. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I mean, buy it now. Shopping at Walmart. There we go. Thank you. Buy some stuff at Walmart. Buy some supplies. My bad. Yeah, I didn't mean to hit that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Camille uh, can go me, buy uh, gardening supplies over at Walmart. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I. That's what I meant to say. That's what yeah. I was or, do. You know, buy some actual other ingredients so you can have stuff in your house. That'd so be like we have nothing but. We actually should go buy some stuff at Walmart. <laughs> I legit buy all my groceries from Walmart through online. It's, I'm, yeah, I'm not kidding. I do get all my groceries from Walmart. Wait, yeah. does it we're, do they deliver? We're really being the uh, yeah. yeah. Uber Eats and um, Uber Eats. Uh, Instacart. Yeah, you can just like Walmart.com and deliver. Yeah. Um, we're not getting a cent for this. I hope yeah. you all know that. Really? Like, we're not getting paid. Marcel, put that well, banner back up. You know, one, one in, six Riley. is actually getting paid for Walmart. All organic, baby. This is just an organic discussion. 
Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the produce, getting paid for Walmart. Yeah. Farm to table, like the farm. fresh produce. We're at talking Walmart. farm to table. Steve. Farm. We're talking farm for gro- fresh grown food. We're talking one hundred percent dairy bags. free. Come on, no price, delivery to know. your door, dude. Yeah, Walmart can <laughs> deliver to your door, dog. Farm to table, super efficient. No like get on the Walmart train, dog. Yeah. Like seriously. <laughs> <laughs> At least Marcy, what's up with you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just facts, running on meetup. That's facts. what I'm doing. What was that, Tammy? I said at least it's not Loblaws because they're oh, yeah. they're both oh, now, aren't yeah. They? yeah, yeah, yep. Who were that Nicole. guy's name? I always hear my friend yelling Bob, his name. Bob, 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 name. Blahs, la, la, blah blog. Is <laughs> no, the, what? Blah, 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 Nolan, something. Blah blah blah. Galen Weston. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he hates. He hates that guy. He's always cursing his name every day. So anyway, I'm doing a meetup. Throw on meetup. If you're in the Toronto area, come on by. If you're a content creator, we're going to have some cool game demos. And we'll be there. Be there. I'll be there. there. And the whole cast we'll will be, be there. there. You know? yeah. Will we? Yeah. Yeah. Will we? No, of course. We'll, well be I don't know about meet. you because we'll you might not know. make it's, it's a gaming podcast <laughs> meetup <laughs> featuring yeah. the Twitch meetup. <laughs> yeah. That's what yeah. that exactly. is. Sponsored uh, by be, Walmart. Yeah. There's going to be no one there to meet us. No one will be there to meet us. If you're there, try not to step on the lane. If, if you wished floor. hard enough, it could yeah. be. <laughs> well, they don't know they're coming to our meetup. I just I'm dressing it as a Twitch Toronto uh, meetup. I'll be uh, posted off in a booth. So it's a bait and switch deal. I got it. I got gotcha. you. Mm-hmm. Real over. talk. Has I'll anyone ever signed an autograph? Yes. Like yeah. I've won only, but it was a very interesting experience. I don't it's sign very- them often, but I've yeah. signed a few. Yeah. Mine yeah. just like, gets worse. I was like, by, hey, like, Riley, and I was one. like, I don't know who you are. I have no idea. <laughs> you're no. just like hey. as close to celebrity fame. I'm the guy. Yeah. Here you go. Mostly it's photos. I don't get a lot of autographs, but anyway. I was like, leave me alone. <laughs> I don't know. We should ask a boost because he's the he's the one who's, oh, who's, who's more sure. famous out of all of us. Yeah. Someone got a pop funk figure made of like uh you squad, yeah, squad cast. Oh, that's cool. I, what wait, that's a what? Sick. Yeah. Uh, wait, you oh, wait, made, wait. This is like years like before, before I joined. Years, yeah, yeah, yeah. Years no. when we were in school. Uh, that's the <laughs> your camera froze at the best time just now. I'm just letting you know. Yeah, can you use that as your picture? <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> no, it was super flattering. Don't worry about no, it. No, no, right, no, no, no. See you just, later. <laughs> it's just private discussion between friends. Leave us alone. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Uh, well, I'm gonna end this episode. Thank you so much for everyone for joining. We'll see you here next week. Uh soon it's gonna be Gamescom. So good real. Oh yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna have lots of news soon. Lots of news. Yeah. A lot a lot of reaction that yeah. you know, a lot that's of really reactionary like, content. Mm-hmm. Go buy good. your supplies at Walmart, dog. Go to Walmart. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> Walmart will be calling you tomorrow. Bye bye. <laughs>